Hey everybody, this is Coffee Chug here again. This is Line Follow 4, a more advanced Line Follow program using data blocks. But the beauty of this one is that this robot program is super smooth. And so if you can handle a few data blocks and calculations, this program is going to be right up your alley. So what we've done, I'm actually just going to slide this over and I'm going to build this for you as we talk here. What we're going to do is you're going to start with a loop block like we've been doing for all the previous line follows. And so if you've watched line follow tutorials one, two, or three, you'll see this is how we started. Now this one's going to be different because now as opposed to having the robot make decisions, the robot's going to be gathering information and making calculations accordingly. So the first thing that we're going to do in this loop is we're going to be putting another loop. So I'm just going to expand this loop block here um, and just make it a little bit bigger. And inside there, I'm going to add another loop. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in here. I'm just going to move it out a little bit. Now in this loop, I'm going to go through it. And what I want to do is grab the sensor reading of my reflected light. And we've talked plenty about reflected light and the, the benefits of that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this here. We're going to measure the reflected light intensity in this one. So it's going to be reading. I'm just getting the reading of what the sensor is grabbing from the map. And we're going to move that here into a data block. Now you can call this whatever you want. In my case, I've called it coffee because coffee is delicious. It's what I run on. It's what I fuel on. Um, so there's just simply no other choice. But you can call it whatever you want there. Now, what you want to do then is we want to bring a data block right in here. Because we want the sensor, whatever it's reading, in the port. And in my case, my robot port is 1. Whatever you have yours plugged into. And we want to store that here in this data block. Now, the next thing we want to do um, is create another loop. So while this is getting that reading and storing it, we want some other things to be happening. So we're going to go back here to our loop. We're going to bring this down here. I'm going to attach a cable to it here. Now, what I want to do in there uh, let's make sure this is connected. There we go. What I want to do in here is a similar thing. So we're going to go ahead and grab whatever that information is from coffee. We're going to put it in this block here. But we're not writing this number. We want to read it. So here we're giving this block a value. Coffee is going to have a number between 1 and 99, depending on the light threshold. So we want to read that, whatever it is that we're reading. And we want that a numeric value. And then we're going to do some math here. And so one of the things I know when I work with kids and, and talk with people is they don't realize that the robot can actually do math calculations. So we're going to move this. We don't want to add. We actually are going to do some subtraction here. And we're going to take this block and make this A. So whatever this value is up here in this sensor right here, it's going to get stored down here. And we're going to plug it in for this A value. Now, earlier, we've done some different calculations and, and thresholds and so forth. And so you're going to have to kind of play around this a little bit. Um, and so you can see, let me go back over here for a minute. In this program, I have kind of taken two different values. And you're going to have to kind of figure that out a little bit on your own. What I've done is just grab two different thresholds. I know on my board it's typically 50 is that cutting point and so if I want it to make some some minor maneuvering um, I'm right around 50. I'm Actually I've moved this to 46 over time and this is upwards of 70 in terms of getting those threshold values. Alright so when you start out with this a couple things that I would suggest. This one here is going to be for your black. And so this is grabbing your threshold value. And we're doing a subtraction. Now, 
in my example, I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, 46 and 69. What you're going to want to do is start with actual threshold numbers. So for me, mostly my robot hovers for black at around 10. Um, and so you may want to start there, and then you can adjust this number to get it as precise as you would like. The next step that is we're going to do some multiplication. So we're going to add another calculation block here. And this time we're going to switch this to multiply. And so we're getting our threshold value here stored in this block. We're adding it here to A. Whatever this number is, minus 10, because this is going to be for black here. I'll put a comment up so we know. And then we're going to add that right here to A. So whatever this number is, say it's 30 minus 10 is 20. It's going to put that there. It's going to put 20 right here for A. And then B is going to be our speed. Now, for this example, I'm going very slow so you can see how smooth it is. But what you want to do is adjust this accordingly. You don't want to go too fast. It'll, it'll get off key. So you just have to figure out what's that maximum value that allows for nice, smooth line following that allow you to get your missions and, and things accomplished. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to make this move a motor. And so we're doing a single motor move right in here. And so we're going to drag this. We're going to turn this motor on. And we're going to drag whatever this calculation is right here. For me, this is my A motor. So it's taking this light threshold value again, subtracting it from this number, this B. And I said start it at at 10 and you can adjust up you can see for me I really like it I'm up to 46 we're gonna multiply this by a number which is your speed whatever that number is that's what's gonna that's gonna be the numeric value for the motor in terms of the speed at which that motor is gonna be moving so we're just gonna do the exact same thing so I'm just gonna click here I'm gonna select all that and then I'm gonna paste this block in and I'm going to drag this right down below. And we're going to do the same exact thing here, but except for now, we're going to do it for white. So I'm going to need to drag this wire down here. Now we're going to do the exact opposite. I'm actually going to move this wire to B this time. And you may want to start at 100. That's the highest white threshold, so to speak, of the reflected light intensity. So whatever this number is, it's going to be 100 minus whatever it reads. It's then going to pump that in over here to A. Same speed, 0.5. And then we're going to do the other motor, which is B. And it's going to keep doing this over and over again. And actually, when you run it, if you have it plugged in, you'll see that it'll run all three of these all at the exact same time. So let's take a look at how this works and I think you're going to be really really impressed with how smooth this operation is.